Welcome to episode 755. Biker News is up first and then China Doll in the second half. Don't forget you can go over to Spotify and listen to the second half of the show or any major podcast platform. Anyway, looks like the cops are being busy bees again. Yes, they're out there messing with the Volusia Hells Angels. Man, it's like they never stop. They never do. The little busybodies. Man, they need to go pick on somebody else. Go waste somebody else's money. Also in Australia, the Killer Bees Motorcycle Club. They got into it with some uh, tribesmen, I believe it was. Not looking good over there, but hey, man, you got to say, Killer Bees is a pretty cool name, man. Whatever it is, it's a cool name. You got to give them that. Got to give them that. A lot of uh, countries worldwide, they have some clubs that are just, uh, it's like, dude, did you smoke a joint to come up with a name or something? You know, not saying anything bad or anything. I'm just saying, hey, man, it was cool. Anyway, we also going to start out right now with some good stuff out of WKTV.com Mug Club 7th Annual Firefighters Ride to Benefit Believe 271 Heck yeah man That's what I'm talking about here Let's listen in If we can get them to play The time now 642 It is time to welcome the newest member of our Morning Mug Club Brought to you by Holland Farms Bakery and Deli Coming up on Saturday June 4th the Red Knights Motorcycle Club is hosting their 7th Annual Firefighters Ride. The ride begins and ends at the Westmoreland Fire Department, rain or shine, with a mid-ride stop at Harley-Davidson of Utica on Commercial Drive. The cost to take part is $25 per rider and $15 per passenger, and that includes a meal and beverage ticket. Registration opens at 8.30 in the morning. The blessing of the bikes is at 10 a.m. Kickstands go up at 10.30. This is open to the public and online registration is still available. Just search Annual Firefighters Motorcycle Ride on Facebook. There will also be food, raffles, and plenty of vendors on hand. All proceeds will go to the Believe 271 Foundation, which provides financial assistance and volunteer to volunteer firefighters in Oneida and Herkimer counties who are fighting cancer and serious illness in the fire service. All right, there you go right there. The benefit, you can go Saturday, June 4th. Again, ride begins and ends at the Westmoreland Fire Department. If you can't make it, I suggest donate to the National Firefighters uh, Association's Fund. You know, Hollywood, uh, China Dow, and Insane Throttle supports our firefighters 110%. Big time. Now, fleeing biker burned in crash after pursuit. We were talking the other day about how one uh, biker, you know, he wasn't being too good. And next thing you know, we seen the film and he had gas all over him and the cop tased him. And now he has over 70% of his body is third degree burns because the cop unbelievable now out of georgia fleeing biker burned in crash after pursuit troopers say <sighs> unbelievable anyway paramedics airlifted a claremont man to the hospital after a fiery my motorcycle crash in white county 49 year old bruce morgan suffered second degree burns in the single vehicle wreck on State Route 11 near Tommy Cowart Road, state troopers were pursuing Morgan just prior to the crash, but the Georgia State Patrol says they had already called off the pursuit when the wreck happened. Sure you did. Sure you did. I say let's look at some body cams. 
The chase began shortly after 8 p.m. on May 23rd on Georgia 400 North near the Lumpkin County line. According to Corporal Cody White with the GSP Post 37, the biker, later identified as Morgan, slowed near the intersection of GA 400, then accelerated and failed to yield. A state trooper who was following the sheriff's deputy activated his patrol lights and siren and began pursuing the fleeing motorcyclist. Well, TFC bulking began having radio issues near the White County line and was losing visual of the motorcycle. He called the pursuit off via phone and radio. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Approximately seven minutes later, GSP reports the motorcycle crash. According to the state patrol at the time of the crash, Morgan was not being pursued. Really? No other vehicles were involved in the wreck. The motorcycle was engulfed in flames and Morgan sustained second degree burns. Uh, they claim he was transported uh, to Grady uh, Hospital Burn Unit in Atlanta with non-life-threatening injuries. <sighs> Ricky Caps. Anyway, here we go. Here we go. I love this one. I love this one. Uh, an enforcer with HA just knocked the hell out of a guy. You just see the picture right there. Uh, major federal investigation underway targeting Volusia Hells Angels series of December raids lead to recent arrest warrants. Brutal clubhouse beaten detailed in court records. You shouldn't be disrespectful in a clubhouse. Shouldn't run in your mouth. That's the only reason why that you would get to knock the hell out. Uh, let's see here. The FBI is investigating potential criminal enterprise activities of the Volusia chapter of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, including an hours long beating at the infamous outlaw biker gang's clubhouse and the possession of gun silencers and more than 1000 rounds of ammo seized in a series of December raids. Any criminal complaint filed in the Eastern District of California, federal authorities revealed they sought arrest warrants for three Hells Angels members and one enforcer as part of an ongoing investigation into the Volusia County or, uh, yeah, Volusia Charter of the Hells Angels. The FBI appears to be weighing the possibility of seeking an indictment under the RICO Act. Of course. Because some civilian was running off at their mouth. Really? Task Force Officer Shane Rafferty described the charter as a criminal enterprise that lords over other motorcycle clubs and is involved in territorial dispute with rival clubs. Quote, to perpetrate the enterprise and to maintain and expand its power, Hells Angels of Volusia and Associates engage in a pattern of racketeering predicates, including committing and conspiring to commit murder, attempted murder, intimidation, and assault resulting in great bodily injury against individuals who pose a threat to the enterprise or who would jeopardize its operations. Oh my God, you guys. You know what? You guys are dreamers, man. You cops really are. The more that we cover this type of stuff over the years, the worse you people get. Federal prosecutors have filed gun possession charges against one of the alleged Hells Angels member, Jamie Alvarez. The criminal complaint seeks arrest warrants against two others, Kenneth Caspers and Dennis Killo, as well as Michael Mahoney, who is described as an enforcer for the group, but not a member. Oh, my goodness gracious. How are you going to be an enforcer for the club if you're not a member? My gosh. The complaint cont uh, contains an update or an undated picture of Mahoney wearing a Hells Angel vest that says hang around a status the club assigns to those who seek to become prospects and eventually full-fledged members. 
Uh, yeah, dude, he got knocked the hell out, man. You know, you shouldn't be running your mouth is all I have to say. Not in the clubhouse, man. It's like going in somebody's other, somebody else's home and running your mouth. But, <laughs> uh, then they talked about the Sonoma County ones. It just looks like they're being busybodies, man. It really does. And then they describe a complaint about an hours long assault. That looked like it only took like five seconds, man. Just saying. That's what I'm, you know, that's what I'm saying. Uh, roughly a dozen Hells Angel allegedly pulverized two members of the Union Iron Workers Motorcycle Club, beating one for an hour and 50 minutes. That victim said he used a clock on the wall to time the beating and a second into a semi conscious state. Union Iron Workers Motorcycle Club. Sad state of affairs that. Some of your guys would go in there talking smack in somebody else's clubhouse. You'd think you, they would know better. And now they're claiming that he was they were beaten for over an hour. You're lying. Okay? You're lying. There's no way that beating went for an hour and 50 minutes. It just ain't possible. You'd be dead by then. Come on, man. Really? Ugh. <laughs> okay, they say he uh, suffered multiple broken ribs, which can happen in a couple minutes, and was told the beating would stop if he came up the name of the second uh, iron worker, uh, Union Iron Workers Clubhouse member he would had been filmed talking to about motorcycle clubs. You know what? You're, you, you, give me a break, man. Give me a break. You guys need to check your freaking members, iron workers. Anyway, gang feud explodes Auckland Rock by five shootings in four inside an hour. A turf war between the Killer Bees. That's not that's now my favorite club name. Killer Bees, you gotta love it. And Tribesmen Motorcycle Gangs has exploded. Uh, the Herald understands, and, you know, I, I take that, you know, as you will. The media really don't understand much. Uh, but police said investigation. Oh, what a burp right there. Anyway, police said investigations were ongoing to determine any potential links between the incident. The lady, latest shootings are understood. What is it with this understood stuff? to be directly linked to a series of tit-for-tat attacks and feud between the two formerly allied gangs. Killer bees, baby! Killer bees! <laughs> Gotta love them! <laughs> I'm telling you, somebody was smoking that joint up, you know what I mean? Getting that name and stuff like that. Anyway, guys, we're gonna go to the second segment of the show again. You know where all the listening's at. Go to our Discord server if you want to interact with me and China Down Live. Coming up on Monday, she's going to be talking about her experiences, property of then and now. Going to be a good one. We'll be right back after this.